Uh, welcome back to Blackjack. I'm Blackjack Caviani, and I am extremely sleepy today. <clears throat> so, I'm not viewing this until like seven hours after it aired. Because <sighs> I needed to sleep. And uh, once again, I am using my neighbor's internet, and I would like everyone to go in the comments and say thank you blackjack's neighbor okay so i did get spoiled on the fact that there are some new costumes that were revealed um uh, that's about it um i only got to see one of them um it it's the Dragon Quest armor, and someone said it looked like Warrior of Light. Which would be cool. Okay, anyway. I did a sound check um, on the Joker reveal video, so I'm hoping everything is roughly the same levels. Hello, everyone. I'm Hiro Sakurai, konnichiwa. the director of konnichiwa, the Sakurai -san. from Sora Limited. Long time no see. The hero so that's Dragon just Quest is joining a the poster battle, that we can that buy. I have some new information to share with you. We have three controllers in front of us. Usually, we prepare a four? script for Nintendo Direct. And we have you call in your friend? cuts together, but this time, I'd like to take more of a live stream approach and present it myself. Okay. We don't have much of a budget for this. While I discuss, I'll be playing with the controller as well. I hope okay. you enjoy it. But before we get into it, I should mention that the Dragon Quest series began in 1986. Nice, an nice. Iconic Japanese role-playing game. It wouldn't be an exaggeration grade. to say that Dragon Quest was what popularized RPGs in Japan. And beyond that, it's a top-notch game that's become a cultural phenomenon. The latest entry in the series is Dragon Quest XI S, echoes of the Elusive Age Definitive S. Edition, which is releasing soon on Nintendo Switch, so please look forward to it. Today, I'll be playing the development version of the ROM, so there may be parts where the camera seems different from the version you have at home. Okay, makes sense. That makes sense! Yay! The hero draws near. Here's a lineup of all four heroes. I think, to some, this scene alone might seem pretty astonishing. Yeah. This one is the hero from Dragon Quest XI S, the one that's releasing soon. The 16-year-old was dubbed the Darkspawn, and he wields the weapon the Supreme Sword of Light. Now for the hero from Dragon Quest Three. This is the hero Erdrick, and he's 16 the years old. Of he's equipped with Erdrick's sword. So Actually, in three and eleven, the hero shield designs are almost identical, but we've changed them. They up a bit. specified it's that his name is Erdrick, but not that the previous one is the Luminary. Next. The hero from Dragon Quest IV, Chapters of the Chosen. This 17-year-old okay. is the ancestor of the Bride from Dragon Quest V, Hand of the Heavenly Bride. He's equipped okay. with the Zenithian Sword. Lastly, the hero from Dragon Quest VIII, Journey I found out I actually have that game. The 18-year-old who isn't affected by the curse. Munchie is in his pocket, and as a former royal guardsman, he's equipped with the Dragovian King Sword. I'd carry around a hamster that in said, my pocket. It may be a bit tough to distinguish them using just the name Hero. So if you want to refer to each of them individually, here are their names. Okay. The hero from 11S is 11. The <laughs> hero from 3 is Arusu. The hero from 4 is Solo. And the hero from 8 is 8. Okay. Arusu? He just referred to him as Erdrick. Okay, who else is getting confused? You can use these names to reference them if you'd like. Also, they each have a color variation. All right. Oh, that's Coloring cool. The design of these variations are based on characters from the series. Can you guess who they are? Not one bit. This is actually the very first time that the heroes in the Dragon Quest series have been able to fight each other. It was allowed to finally happen in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and for that, <laughs> I am very grateful. Awesome. Each hero has a different voice actor, and I'd like to introduce them now. Here they are. First off, though, I was going to say, um, 
so the menu actually does pop up. I thought that was just like a UI thing. Like I thought that was just something there rather than um, anything we could actually interact with. I just realized there's like a town down there that's all flooded out. The hero from Eleven is Mitsuki Saiga. We're not going to see this them? hero speaks in Eleven S, but the action in this game is different, so her voice acting needed a bit more oomph. Her voice? Okay. The hero from Three is played by Nobuyuki Hiyama. You might say the King of Braves is playing the hero, but he voiced Link in the original Super Smash Bros. and Super Smash Bros. Melee games. Nice! So you could say he was already a hero. He's definitely a pro, and out of all the voice actors, his recording session went the fastest. Okay, well, can we see the recording sessions? Do you have video? The hero from 4 is voiced by Takeshi Kusao. Okay. He's a veteran voice actor, and asks for a lot of detail on the backstory of his character. Ah. And this has carried over into his performance. That's good to hear. I like hearing stuff like that. I'd want to know that The hero from 8 is voiced by Yuki Kaji. It was apparently a dream of his to do voice work for the Super Smash Brothers and the Dragon Quest series, so he was happy to have both dreams come true at once. Indeedly do. The heroes from 3, 4, and 8 are being voiced for the first time in the series, and calling out the spell names is also the series first. Cool. That sounds fun. Who are their voices in English, or are we getting them now, if they're get a look at these calling out the names of the attacks? The animations are a bit more energetic than the standard sword users, since we aim to match the style of Akira Toriyama. Are they? Sometimes the hero smash attacks result in a critical hit. That sounds like fun. Random, but when it does, you'll perform an extra strong attack. It's got those Toriyama surprise dice. These critical yeah. hits actually match the look of critical hits in various installments of the series. Cool. Note the subtle nuances. Subtle. The hero is equipped with a shield, which can block various projectiles. Okay. I assume. His forward tilt is a shield bash attack that can also be used to block projectiles. Okay, that's His cool. His neutral special is the Frizz family of spells. Frizz. Frizzle. And Kafriz. Kafriz. <laughs> you can stop your charge in the middle by shielding, and then you can resume charging again. Nice. Then you could store the full charge. Until oh, cool! It's got MP. Anytime. However, even if you've charged up a Kafriz, nothing will happen if you don't have enough MP at the time. So be careful. That's fun. That'll be interesting. Side special produces zap type spells. Enter the command quickly for a zap which is a good way to keep opponents in check. Hold it down a little longer for a Zapple, which has Zapple. a pretty good reach. And if you charge it up all the way, you'll let loose a Kazam. Each of these spells you say your lightning to power up your attacks. Next is the Wu's spell these spells, Whoosh. which can be used for recovery. Performing a short up special results in a whoosh. Not looking forward charging to the Reddit memes about that. Our whoosh. And charging it up all the way results in a kasoosh. You can only store a charge with frizz type spells. A whoosh is fairly stunted, requiring only a little MP. Okay. A swoosh actually provides a bit more lateral movement. Sounds like fun. A kasoosh allows you to recover even if you fall pretty far. Nice. Also, whoosh type spells can blow enemies into the air. Oh, that's cool. That's clever. That way, you can interfere with opponents. <laughs> ah, so it's a double edged sword. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Different whoosh. His down special pulls up a random list of commands. Random? Wow. Doing so allows you to use a spell or other move. Oomph simply raises your attack power. With a fully charged smash attack, you can deal this much damage. Oh, okay. Now for Psycho. It increases the You have power to be real attack. quick. The difference between this one and Oomph is that it can only be used once, but the effect lasts until your attack finishes, even if you miss. 
Okay, well that's cool. Next up, bounce. It reflects your opponent's spells and other projectiles. What does all that writing say? I wanna know. I just wanna know what the runic bounce. says on the shield. The effect of the lets you reduce your damage percentage. Nice. Flash can spread damage to a wide area in front of you. The crackle slash can freeze opponents. <laughs> so he's looking to be a highly technical character. Accelerator significantly increases your speed. Boom sets off a mighty explosive spell. Snooze puts opponents to sleep. That way, you can follow it up with a beefy attack. Hatchet man. Like hatchet man. And then there's Thwack. This Sometimes, but he was at 100. An opponent in one hit. However, the opponent's damage percentage will ultimately yeah, determine yeah. the effect. So Which you could conceivably low, do it. It's less likely to activate. At zero percent? Zoom. This spell is well suited for recovery. As demonstrated, it lets you recover from anywhere, but you may hit your head on the ceiling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kaklang. When you cast a spell, you become impervious to attacks. That sounds like fun. Watch out for a metal slash. Metal slash is a skill that can KO a metal opponent in one hit. That go Focus for any metal is a opponent? Spell with unpredictable effects. Oh, looks like it slowed me down. But not all of its effects are bad. Sometimes good things happen too. <laughs> Magic burst. As you can see, my MP is depleting rapidly because the spell uses oh, that's all nice. the remaining MP to deal massive damage. The amount of MP Jeez, they really just wanted to cram in all the moves they could. That's finally, awesome. Kamikaze. This spell produces an extremely powerful explosion, but it also results in self-destruction. Yeah, you could definitely he hear the link in his voice moves. there. In fact, of all the fighters, Hero has the highest number of them in the game. More than Bayonetta, huh? You can close At least it seems like she has more than anyone else. That way, you can try again and hope for a different set of spells. That makes sense, That's so final smash, they had to have a downfall. Slash, and it's no mere kazak. This move calls upon all the past protagonists to lend the hero their power for one mighty blow. Cool. I only played nine. This attack has a high vertical range, and if it's within four in-game meters, it will connect. I love, um... In games that are designed by Toriyama, where you can make your own character, you can make basically any Toriyama character. It's hilarious. I know someone who was playing through uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse as Chrono. It may be a bit hard to imagine how it works, so I'll fight a CPU opponent for a while. All right. I'm fighting at Yggdrasil's altar. I'm the hero from 8, and the CPU is the hero from 4. There's the stage. The stage starts off on this platform, which begins to rise. The platform stays in place and moves the world around it. I'll use Zappo from a distance. The Sky Whale! Link's used to those. The CPU's counter attacks are pretty good. I think I'll try a command selection. Snooze. Hmm. This is basically some Good scenery stuff. porn level, huh? Kaboom. I mean, I'm certainly I'm not adverse to those. So it's certainly one of my once was to see the deck of the Royal Unova scene of the stage. Ah, uh, yes. You gotta get the little round houses in a Toriyama work. Critical hit. Heal. I'll go ahead and use Accelerator. And the final smash. Yeah! Who's the little one there in green? 
He looks like he's like five nice. years old. <laughs> Oops, well, he used hatchet man. There's a slime! Oh, and there's like a slimy little thing on the front too that looks like an Adventure Time character. It's even waving. Okay, there we go. There we get some. Ooh, he got me. Yeah, I think you let him get you. He got me. And at the edge of the screen, no less. In these free-for-all battles, it's pretty... Yeah, so there's another little slimy thing, but it's not a slime. That's the one in the back there. Time's up. Hopping all around. Oh, the sword is covering up the little... The little uh, hamster thing. I want to see the hamster thing. Come on. This stage Cute. is called Yggdrasil's Altar, and it's based on a location in Dragon Quest XI S. One difference. Is it that would be the yes. Rises, which is very Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> We're passing close by Cetacea. After that, we'll be able to see all of Erdrea. Oh, that's beautiful. The giant tree in the background is an important point in Dragon Quest XI. Well, yeah, that would be Yggdrasil. You can see a taco walking by. While the taco is out there, some sort of platform will appear. Oh, they're linked. We just passed Arborea. And you can see what looks like a rainbow bridge. Mm-hmm. And now we pass Haven's I remember above. in 9, there were, like, mystic train tracks. Also, your teacher in that looked basically Tian Shin Han. You'll see slimes appear in the background, but sometimes you'll see liquid metal slimes appear too. Yeah, see, there's a little thing. Rare. As we pass Cetacea again, Cetacea. <laughs> we draw near to the giant tree. There's the slime, there's the slime. So it'd be nice if you go through the waterfall and get a little stage a little damp. We can see a light, which also appears in Dragon Quest XI S. Yeah, I, well, I figured it would. And then we finally make our way back around. Whew. By the way, there's something over here. Yeah. Sometimes a treasure chest appears on the Ooh. Stage, as you can see here. If you open it, you get an item. Oh, that's cool. But it could also be a trap. Oh no! It's a mimic. Oh, that's hilarious. If you try your hardest, you might defeat it. You don't oh, cool. have to fight it, but if you manage to beat it. You'll get an item. That's fun. Although Yggdrasil's altar is based on the world of 11S, I felt it would be unfortunate to have only one or two songs from that game. So instead, we decided to compile a collection of field and battle tunes for each hero. Sounds good, good, sounds good. Players who have an emotional tattoo Wagon Wheels March. The hero goes forth with a determination. A determination. Of course, you can also enjoy them by using the sound test feature. You won't be able to select the famous prelude that way. But the end of the prelude will play during the hero's victory screen. We've also added other content, including some of the spirit board. Yay! <laughs> will be available on Tuesday, July 30th. Wait, oh, that's today. If you have the fighter's pass, you should be able to get him right away. I could do that. We're also planning to make him available I mean, visually for could. $5.99. We're it wouldn't also adding a new take up much for Please take the a look. borrowing internet, but at the same time it also... Um, Depends on the servers. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's cute. Veronica!
Okay, this is the one I saw. That's cool. I'm liking that. <laughs> Tiny metal slime. Tiny metal slime. Yeah, yeah. Extra meat fighter costumes are not included in the fighter's pass. Why do they do that to us? Hero, the version 4.0 update will also be available. Okay, what will this give us? There will now be a time limit on the final smash meter. That'll make it harder to use your attack range to play a waiting game. So How long is the time limit? To just use your final smash when it's ready. It will stick around for a while, and you'll be able to tell how long you have by looking at the meter, which will deplete over time. We're also adding a very easy difficulty oh. to adventure mode, so if a battle is just too difficult for you to clear, or if you simply want to have a relaxing time playing, please Oh, well, that, that's, that's good. Okay, yeah, are we allowed to cheer? Another new feature will let you try and oh. predict the winner during spectate mode. Then, you can exchange the points you accumulate for an item. Even if your prediction is wrong, there's nothing to lose, so I suggest supporting fighters to your That's good. <laughs> An online tourney mode will also be added in. To I bet that's making a lot of people very excited. Select the, mode. the rules are preset, but they'll change periodically. Okay, what's with these names? I hope you enter these tourneys over and over. We also plan to hold Scarlet, though. Project Scarlet? What's more, there are other new additions, like being able to insert screenshots into the videos you edit, and cool. being able to consecutively play videos that have been added to shared content. Ah. Plus, there are new amiibo available now. Yay! Isabel, Pokemon Trainer, and Pichu. Cool, cool. Each one will be available in a yellowish package, so keep an eye out for them. Hmm. Finally, the fighter known as Hero will be distributed soon, but Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition will release on September 27th. See, the thing so is, I thought that was already well. out. They should do, um, like a Dragon Quest collection, at least us the first few games. Time, but I'm still not sure if we will do this every time a new fighter is released. Yeah, probably not. Regardless, I hope you have fun with Hero. See I'm sure time. I will. Okay, so... Honestly, I gotta say that was a little underwhelming, but... You know, we got a nice view of the character. The thing that bugs me, though... Why aren't costumes put in the fighter pack? I mean, come on, we're already paying a fair amount. Jeez, my dry skin there looks like I've been snorting something. That is just dry skin, I assure you. I get high on life. Uh, so, I don't know, the, the, putting the costumes in there but not in the pack is weak sauce you know i mean seriously that's so weak sauce is pretty much water and not good water either <laughs> uh so yeah i guess i don't really have much to say i think i said everything during that um <sighs> hmm. heavens yes um, it's like 1.30 now, and I am still so exhausted, I might as well just crawl back into bed, except I gotta get the birds up. I swear, if it wasn't for them, I'd probably sleep a lot longer. By which I mean I'd probably sleep till like 5 in the evening, because I cannot sleep during the night. Oh my goodness. Ah! The cat. 
camera positioning is just... I want to be down here, but the camera positioning forces me to go all the way up here. Ah, oh, jeez. I just brushed my hair, too. Ah! And yes, you know, you do see this gray streak. I've actually had that since I was, like, 20. Hmm. Else? Oh yeah, <clears throat> going off the whole the whole thing about um, the costumes not being included. I feel like there needs to be some way of some sort of company wide and system wide and industry wide solidification on the prices of DLC because you have stuff like. Well, I mean, Animal Crossing New Leaf gave us pretty much, you know, not really doubling the content, but like, uh, what's it called? And then half? It gave us like 50% more stuff for free, even though that was with the stipulation, the belief that it would make people go out and buy amiibo cards, which we did for a while. Amiibo cards are fun, I gotta say. And I mean, the solid price is a dollar each, so that's not bad. Uh, I wish there was more of a trading scene for them, though. But, you know, you could also play completely without those. So that was a lot of fun. And then you have, you know, stuff like this at $6 a character, which isn't bad. You know, you gotta figure that's a lot of... You get the character... You get the stage, you get the music, you don't get the costumes, though, and I think that's super bad. Um, and then something like Warriors Orochi 3, you get, you know, for $1.99, <sighs> you get, like, a new map, I scaled and everything. I don't think that's for all of them, but it's definitely for some. And you get, like, brand new adventures and all kinds of stuff. Um, they also had costume packs for that game. And I think everything for that game was $1.99. So that, um, that was interesting. Um, it just kind of seems like there needs to be some sort of industry-wide um, solidification of how DLC is done. And, you know, what kinds of prices things are at. Um, well, I have to go eat something, and I gotta get the birds up. I gotta feed them. And, yeah. So, I'm gonna let you go. Um, I had a good time. I'm really glad I didn't... I'm really glad I didn't stay up for it, or wake up early for it. I you know, it was a solid adventure. Um, I say I was disappointed or let down, but uh, underwhelmed or whatever word it is I used. But really, that was just because of the DLC thing. The online tournament thing is going to be real big. Um, I imagine people aren't going to be too excited about the holding on to the Smash having a time limit now. Um, even though it does make more sense. But anyway, though, I'll see you later. I'm Blackjack Gabbiani, and you're not.